I am Jim Collison, live from our home studios around the world. This is Gallup's Theme Thursday, Season 6, recorded on April 23rd, 2020. Theme Thursday is a Gallup webcast series that dives deep into the Clifton Strengths themes, one theme at a time. This season, based on developing teams and managers with Clifton Strengths, and today is the Influencing Domain Wrap. If you're listening live, we'd love to have you join us in our chat room. There's actually a link to the chat room right above, above me, right up there. Just click on that link, and it'll take you to the YouTube page that has the chat room in it. It's either to the right <clears throat> or down below the video. Click on the three dots and pop it out. I'd love to have you in the chat room. If you have questions after the fact, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you're on YouTube. It's right, Micah, show them where to subscribe on YouTube. Just down below there is available for it. Yeah, there, th there you go. And uh, hit the notification bell as well. If you like the video, hit the like as well. That helps us with discoverability. Micah Librant is our host today. She's a senior workplace consultant here at Gallup. And Micah, always great to have you on theme Thursday. Welcome to our wrap party. Thanks. Happy to be here. We get to talk about my dominant domain of influencing. Yeah. And but I said the wrap party. This isn't wrapping the season. We're only halfway through, but this is like we're a wrapping the influencing wrap. domain. There you go. Yeah. 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 Let's talk, like let's a, talk a little bit about it. Level wrap. So <laughs> as you mentioned, Jim, Theme Thursday, season six focuses on the power of strengths within a team. So today's our, our mid-season summary episode where we get to talk about what we've done going through our influencing themes. You know, there are four domains uh, that originally came about when we studied leadership. Uh, we started with executing and, and really did a deep dive into all of the, all the themes within the executing domain. And then over the past seven themes, we looked at influencing. So today's a chance to review where we've been and offer insights on what we've discovered, summarize what we know to be true and consistent about that influencing domain of Clifton Strengths themes. Uh, when we wrapped the executing theme or the executing domain, I said that these looking at these themes in the context of the domain has been really, really helpful to me to look at them all together, all at the same time. So if you're joining us for the very first time, that's really the, I think the best way to consume the, the, these, these um, webcasts, these podcasts this season is do them all together. But Micah, when we think about those themes that are part of the influencing domain, what are they? What do we know about them? Sure. So the domains themselves, and if you're if you're new to Theme Thursday, um, in, in previous seasons, in season one, we kind of just were talking about how to learn and love every single theme. And the order was more based on um, what we could talk about at the time. Season two, we went alphabetically by all 34 themes. Season three is the only other time that we've gone domain by domain. And that's because season three, we really were also talking about strengths-based leadership, which is leadership is where these themes were sort Sort of born from, if you think about what was the original research question that led to this understanding of 34 themes classified into four different buckets. So those buckets uh, or the domains are meant to answer the question, how does somebody lead? For influencing, it's by helping their teams reach a broader audience than they could have on their own. Now, consider the implications of this on an individual or a team level. How do we expand that understanding beyond just answering a leadership question and understand what does this say or how can we use these domains as shorthand to really uncover what's true and consistent and powerful about individuals or, or, or collaboration within teams, really the influencing theme domain is about accomplishing excellence through other people. It's accentuating and accelerating the ideas of others, uh, building upon what someone else starts, or maybe even just what somebody considers, and turning that into something more effective, more attractive, or more meaningful than they would have on their own. Within these themes, where do they fit in the context of the family of themes? So I think one way to simplify influencing is to think about promoting or advocating. Uh, but it goes beyond that. It's about affecting the emotion and the action of other people um, in a way that inspires them to see or think or do differently than if the influencer was not there. Uh, 
It's, I think, important to explore how an influencing theme will do that. In fact, anytime you're coaching or even just having a really great strengths-based conversation with somebody, stack the deck with how questions to understand their most natural patterns of behavior. Um, and when we do that and we look into um, all of the themes within this domain, you'll notice that they have a slightly different natural approach. That's why throughout this season, we've been diving into every theme uh, with that idea of not just labeling it and finishing the sentence as, oh, they're an influencer, but really wanting to say, how do they influence? How do they affect other people? So within the influencing domain, you have, um, I'm going to try and do this uh, in a in alphabetical order, activator, command, communication, competition, maximizer, self-assurance, significance, and woo. And they all influence a little bit differently. If you compare and contrast them, um, the difference between activator and maximizer, for example, activator says, let's get going. Maximizer says, let's keep going, but let's make it better. Uh, Self-assurance offers certainty. Command offers direction. Communication offers context, a storyboard, or a broader understanding. Um, and looking at maybe woo and significance, woo craves and creates connection, while significance craves feedback and creates lasting impressions. So just a, a little bit of a taste of what we've been working on uh, throughout this domain. Uh, they all influence, they just do it sort of in different ways. And I think people often wonder about how prevalent some of these themes are and how often they should expect to see one specific theme or another. Um, and that's really interesting. Usually people will ask, hey, what's the most common theme? Or uh, how common are my themes is some, maybe what we're, what we're also wondering. And while that is interesting, and I am going to give you some information on it here, uh, please do a gut check anytime you're doing this, that you're not just feeding your trivia curiosity and, and ending the conversation there. So be more interested, I think, in the globe than you are in the functionality of it. It doesn't work. <laughs> so you always want to say, okay, this is interesting. And how is that going to make my team or my partners even better? Um, but Jim, let's see if you can do this. Uh, when we look at top five and how often a theme shows up in an individual's top five, with more than 21 million people having completed Clifton Strengths, which influencing theme would you say is the most common? Before you answer, we're going to ask this to the chat. Um, so we'll give you five seconds to type your answer into the chat. When we look at people's top five around the globe, which influencing theme do you think is the most common? Mm, it should and should we also say the least common? Give them a chance to do that in the chat yeah, room yeah, as yeah. well. And I just kind of say, I think it's it's uh maybe different than you think but i'm thinking maybe maximizer is that the most common nice it is a tie it is communication and maximizer both communication and maximizer 13 percent of our our global population of clifton strengths completes have e either communication or maximizer in their top five what about Follow uh, closely least. let's say also like 12% is woo. So yeah. woo, woo is right there too. <laughs> That's It's actually more powerful than that. I'm just going to say it. But the uh, when we think about the least common then, um, and it's interesting, we've actually talked about the one that I think when we talk about, it, it's, it's self-assurance, right? Is, mm -hmm. is the it least is. on that one. And then I think command is in there somewhere as well, right? Those are maybe so overall is, the least. This is interesting. Self-assurance is the least common of the influencing themes. It's yeah. also the rarest theme to show up in somebody's top five globally. But if you look at our global database, command and significance are second and third rarest, um, including all the themes. So maybe that has something to do with why um, all the influencing themes as a whole, if you were to compare those four domains, influencing does show up the least frequently. Um, they can, they have all of the sort of bottom five when it looks at frequency there, um, or the most rare, I think is an, is a nice way to put it. In fact, when we rank order by frequency, all these themes, again, as they show up in people's top five, the soonest that you will see an influencing theme, if you look at our, if the globe of people who've completed this was one person, um, the soonest you'll see any influencing theme is ranked at number 18 and that's communication followed immediately by maximizer. So like, okay, so that's trivia. We just did that ourselves, right? Yeah. We kind of just went through this, this, what does that really mean? Like when we, and especially in the context of teams and managers, how do we take this information and make it effective? Well, I think it's a good reminder that we shouldn't be seduced by the myth of well-roundedness being valuable. 
I mean, that, there's a bold statement for the day, right? It's very likely when you look at your team grid or the DNA of your team that you're going to see fewer influencing themes than other domains. It also means you should pay extra special attention to how you can honor and leverage the talents of your team members who do lead with influencing. Um, you do that by understanding that a person is more than one word uh, and that influencing describes more than just one set of talent themes. So I think it, let's dive maybe into other ways that you can understand influencing, uh, knowing that the people on your team are going to be the best advocates for their own talent. They're going to give you clues constantly if you just listen hard enough of how to make the most of them. But I think influencing is a couple things. First, it is an awareness of an external audience. Or you could even call that an other's focus. Um, if you look specifically at significance, it's aware of what others find valuable. Self-assurance is aware of what others can contribute. Influencing is also motivation to inspire. Um, you've got activator and command and woo that all carry this sort of inspiration quality to them. Activator inspires confidence in taking the first step. It's the let's get going, even without knowing the end. Uh, command inspires direction and inspires focus. It's the kid on the playground that other people turn to when they think, okay, what should I do next? Um, woo inspires comfort, inspires social connection. It's that ability to say, exhale and be here and be seen and valued for it. I think the third thing you can you can say influencing certainly is, is creativity through other people. Maximizer and competition describe this. Maximizer sees and and sees excellence and raises the expectations of others to also see that excellence. Competition notices the performance of others and cheers them on or joins them <laughs> there in the arena. Micah, you mentioned it's more important to focus on the functionality of a team in front of you. So how might a manager, as we again, because this season we're really focusing on the managers, how might a, uh, a manager focus on a team that shows a lot of influencing themes, talents among the team? Jim, I think we get this question a lot when people have a real desire to use strengths with their team. And if that desire overshadows the problem you're going to attach it to or a bigger goal that you're facing every day outside of the product of Clifton Strengths, it doesn't have a meaningful uh, sustainability to it. So anytime you look at a team's talent profile, you ideally want to do it with a problem or a question in mind, something that you can aim or attach that desire to. And it needs to be more than just, hey, what are they like? Um, so if you're the manager, you'll best probably come to this question through your own talent filter. Um, mine, for example, I, I have strategic number one. So I find I think best when I work backwards. If I were leading a team, I might say, gosh, what would my dream team do together? What would they accomplish? What would be true and consistent about this team if everything that I was doing or even trying to do really came through? And then I'd work backwards in order to fill in the gap and identify almost a research question of why am I looking at the at the team grid or at the, the team profile here? Let's say in that I identify some gaps and one of those gaps might be, for example, collaboration. Um, many managers that I coach tell me they struggle to help their team really rely on each other um, and that they feel one of their jobs is to create those collaborative moments, especially in a remote environment. <laughs> so if your team wants to be more collaborative and they're dominant in influencing talent, Chances are they're really great at creating opportunities for others, but with that frequent influencing theme, they are uniquely positioned more than other teams to act as connectors between the distant parts of your organization. And that can mean people are working remotely, or it could mean teams are working in isolation and they really need to break down some silos. So you might do a couple things. You might first consider the roles or the teams that are outside your team that you rely on in order to deliver great results. Maybe you confirm at least one champion within your team who can reach out to those others and build trust, build partnership, intentionally create some of those bridges of rapport. Maybe you identify even as a manager what your team does well that other people might need to know about. Again, that idea of helping them reach a broader audience or activate on a, sort of a positive understanding outside of the mo their own selves of what they can offer. So maybe that means that you're leading a short 
lunchtime program or a Zoom call or a webinar on what a specialty of your team is and how you can offer it to people. Um, it's also, I think all roads lead back to having better conversations. So ask your team members for their ideas. Uh, specifically with a team of influencers, you might ask them, hey, how can we improve collaboration? And why does that matter in the first place? It's pretty likely you've got people on your team who already have opinions and can't wait to share them. Ah, remember when we used to get to lunch, get together for lunch physically? <laughs> remember those days? Remember lunch? <laughs> remember those days when it wasn't just to pop up to the kitchen and microwave something? This is a question I'm not a huge fan of, but we I think we have to address it because people are going to ask it, right? Yeah. So what if the team is low in influencing? Like, what is that? And I think sometimes we lead with that. I'm just not a huge fan of leading. That should kind of be the very last thing you talk about in a lot of ways. But Micah, how do we answer that? Well, I, you know, it's it's probably not that they're low in influencing as much as that influencing themes are rare within that team. Um, Good way to say it, by the way. That's a great way to say it. But it may also be that they have influencing themes at the bottom of their profile. Um, that would mean we're low in influencing, right? I think, first of all, it's it's important to identify what might the implications be of that. So instead of saying, is this bad? Let's say... Well, let's use a good coaching question that isn't yes or no and say, when could this get in our way? Um, and how likely is that to happen? Uh, and what would that look like? When you really consider the, the DNA of a team, it's, I think, most practical and fastest and most helpful to really look at what is dominant, what is not low or rare. Um, so rather than saying, you know, you don't have this, acknowledge there actually might be people or, or individual representatives on that team who are strong in influencing. Um, and they're, they might be the minority, but it doesn't mean the team is weak. It means it's rare. And again, it depends on what you want to accomplish. It also depends on the makeup of the team. Um, a group of people who rely on each other for success is very different than a group of contributors who rely independently on their manager, or um, I think a group of contributors who simply on paper roll up to the same person. So before you make the assumption that this team needs to be completely strengths-based and has the capability to rely on each other differently, um, you really need to know a couple things. What is the interdependence of this team day to day? Um, what do we hope to learn or improve or solve with strengths as we talked before? Uh, what will our team or when will our team have another chance to practice what they're learning through this conversation? And maybe think about front-loading that, getting real strategic about offering up an opportunity for them to put some of these uh, discoveries into practice. And sometimes it's it's actually just about how can they work and partner better together or how can you as a manager work and partner better with them? In which case you might have really great functional conversations about shifting what excellence looks like or shifting how often you meet. Um, and it's okay if if all of this makes sense or if only nuggets of this make sense because really the idea of, of opening with curiosity about what's there and what's going well um, and, and what's missing and how could that get in our way, that, that really is... I think the, the strongest play that you can make all of that preamble to say, what are some things that we know might be true about? Let's use that same idea of collaboration just to, to illustrate this. If your team has rarer influencing themes and you want to improve collaboration, honor those individuals who do lead with influencing by asking their opinion on why it's important and how we can lean into them. You might even ask a question like, um, how do your best partners make the most of your influencing talent? Or when um, do you feel like we're missing something that that you're noticing that we're not? Um, also think about, it's always, the answer is always just lean on what they do have, but here's a couple practical ways to do it. Build repeatable habits that encourage team members to get to know each other beyond the professional sense. So maybe that's regular shared meals or quarterly events or challenges that lean into whatever talents they do have and spark that kind of desire but the collaboration is just part of the functionality. Um, also pay attention to individuals' potential for having one or two solid alliances within the team. Maybe they lead with relationship building themes. Maybe they lead with strategic themes where they're thinking about even just the, the practice pragmatic and practical benefit of leaning on each other a little bit more purposefully. 
offer opportunities for people to rely on on more than one peer or maybe even think about expanding uh, the number of people that they rely on outside of their team. So it's not coming at that collaboration problem through the same lens that you would if your team is full of influencers, which is more about, I'm already networking, just give me the place to go. Um, it's instead saying, okay, we need that networking, those connections, that collaboration and that trust really to be the goal. Let's get there in the way that they most naturally behave. Oh, Micah, you've like, changed my way of thinking about this because, I, I, again, sometimes we, we even on our own thinking, we do some deficit thinking. And in this case, to be able to say these talents are more rare in the, and, and, and extra valuable uh, from that mm -hmm. sense. And it would it would pertain to any domain across it, any of the themes in it yeah. as we think about that combination of it, not unique to influencing. Um, there was some great information in there. Where, where do you find all this? Well... I wrote 256 of them, <laughs> but uh, honestly, this is just a drop in the bucket when you look at the information and advice and understanding that's available um, in a partnership with Gallup. Specifically, a lot of these personalized management nudges are found in Gallup Access, which is our portal into the world of everything Gallup knows, discovers, and continues to learn. Um, managers who, who use Gallup Access get individualized suggestions just like this every single time that they log on or open it up from their mobile device. And the system actually gets smarter the more you use it. So it's a little bit like having a coach in your pocket or on your screen who takes into account what the problems are that you're facing, um, what your engagement scores are, what the makeup of your team is, and then can distill all of that into what we know tends to work. If you want to see a demo of that, gallup.com slash access will get you there. If you have questions on it, send us an email, coaching uh, at gallup.com. We asked for some feedback from the community, Micah, during like, what did you learn during this? What, what did we hear? Who got back to us? Um, yeah, so we, we've got some great feedback here. Um, and by the way, keep those coming at any time. Uh, all You don't have to wait for a, a quarter season wrap party to share feedback. It's always important for us to be learning what's making sense for you, what's working, what are you sharing and finding super helpful? What can we do to, to continue to improve? Uh, but there's a couple things that sounds like they're really standing out to our listeners and our participants in the, in the chat every week. Ralph says the five questions around those truths of strong teams are really helpful, especially the one about how talent talent themes show up in one's life as opposed to their work. Another nod to those five truths of strong teams came from Steve. He says, I think my favorite question is the first one around conflict and focusing on results within each theme. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, every single theme within a domain, we unpack based on um, a construct of the five truths of strong teams, which also comes from our strengths-based leadership book. So it's that they focus on results, not conflict. That's what Steve's talking about there that they focus on do what's best for the organization and then move on, that um, strong teams have an equal importance on personal lives and work lives, that they embrace diversity and that they're magnets for talent. So as you listen back to our first domains of season six, you'll notice those five truths of strong teams come up. I also think those help us with what we mentioned before on not just wanting to look at what are they like or what's the makeup of my team. Those can help start your exploration of, hey, what's my problem I'm trying to solve? Um, Helen is also a newly certified Clifton Strengths coach and has been diving into season six. She says, as part of my isolation routine, I'm reading It's the Manager, and I plan to keep up with Theme Thursday along the way. Um, and Stephen had a lot to say. I appreciated everything he shared. Uh, one specific thing he said, it's much more clear to me now how to use these themes as a lens to see how engaged we are in life, wh why we feel fatigue if we're not using our natural way of being most often. Yeah, no, some great feedback on, on the on this part of the season, and uh, and of course, we would expect some of that to hear from a bunch of them uh, it, when we when we hit that idea of influence, and uh, and they get out there and tell us. So we appreciate those folks that did that as well, Micah. As we think about the next domain. Yeah. Give us a give us a little preview. What, what's coming up here in a couple weeks? So we're gonna um, the next domain is relationship building. So we're halfway through. We'll have relationship building followed by the strategic thinking themes, the relationship building themes, and the influencing themes. Uh, honestly, as I was learning it, I would cross pollinate those a lot in my own brain. Um, but the relationship building themes really describe uh, people who get things done by grabbing the hands of others. So it's different from influencing because it's less about uh, taking a message to a broader audience and more about 
focusing on that messenger and the connection you have directly with them. So specifically, those themes are adaptability, connectedness, developer, empathy, harmony, includer, individualization, positivity, and relator. Um, those themes are beautiful and brilliant and so different from each other. Like I look at the power of those relationship building themes and I'm just thrilled that we're exploring every theme with that how question in mind. Because to say, oh, they're just a relationship person or they're just a people person is very different if you consider a theme like adaptability versus a theme like relator. Um, and we'll get to explore what's what's brilliant and true and really different about each of those relationship building themes. It's for me, I have four uh, of these influencing themes in my top 10. I have four of the relationship building themes in my top 10. Pretty excited. Where, what's that for you? Where does that, where does that land for you in your top 10? So I, let's see, in my top 10, I have adaptability, um, positivity, and developer. Yep. And connectedness. So Pretty four. Sure yeah, I guess I have four in my top sure 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So very, very similar. And, and I always like to think, you know, I always like to think influencers get things done through groups of people and a relationship building people get stuff done through the individuals. And yeah. so it's fun to kind of think through now we'll, we'll kind of di uh, dive in a little bit at the macro and talk about those, uh, talk about those themes and how they work in the lives of people. And I'm excited about that because I, I'm a secret, I'm like a closet relationship builder. You know, the woo comes out so strong sometimes, but, but my individualization gets super strong when we start thinking about how to get things done individually with people. And so I'll be excited for this coming up. Micah, final thoughts as we kind of put the final kind of tie up here, the influencing domain. Yeah. So I guess I've uh, influencing has always been the hardest for me to describe. So Jim, I love what you just said about it's, it's doing work through groups of people. I think that might be, <laughs> I talked for 32 minutes and that might've been all I needed to say. Why didn't you start? <laughs> Sorry. Well, you taught me that. That's, I, I got that from everything you said. It's, it's beautiful. It's also maybe the most highly caricaturized um, of all the all the domains. I think you get the most just sort of extreme understanding of those influencing themes for two reasons. They're rare. So you probably don't know or love as many people who lead with really great influencing uh, or self-awareness around their influencing themes. Two, they're um, I would say they're really extroverted. And sometimes that can mean that you get this inflated or cartooned understanding of what the themes are. Um, and I think we've done a really great job. Jim, you've done a really great job of helping me even understand what does this mean in a business sense? What's the practical application of this? How might a manager make the most of somebody who leads with these influencing themes? Um, so I'm I'm proud of the work that we've done here. Good. Well, and I, one of the things that's been a conversation going on in the chat room, we're going to talk about it in the post show. Oftentimes this domain uh, gets, I think, mischaracterized as overwhelming. We've, we That's a word I heard a lot. And any of these themes and domains can be overwhelming in its own context. So we'll talk a little bit about that, I think, in the post show coming up again. Uh, really the best part of joining us is joining us live. You can put your questions in there and stay around for the, yeah, the mid, the <laughs> pre, mid, and post shows that are available. There are a couple of reminders. One, uh, you mentioned it, but uh, if you want to head out and all the resources we have available for you now through Gallup Access, the easiest way to get to it, gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. That's a different one than I mentioned before. You can go to slash access, but if you go to slash Clifton Strengths, take you right to your Strengths dashboard when you log in. So Plus, all our webcasts are there. So I'm a little partial to that landing page as well. And you can get access to our Clifton Strengths community newsletter at the very bottom of any of those pages. You can sign up. We'll send you a monthly newsletter. Keep That way you can keep up to date with all the things that are going on here in the community. If you are on YouTube, just search Clifton Strengths or Gallup Webcasts. You'll see our two channels, our live channel, our edited channel. So I'll subscribe while you are there. If you want to listen to us as a podcast, go to any podcast player and just put in Gallup Webcasts. That'll, you'll find the seven or eight that we're doing at any given time. And so if you want to get that done as well, all the cool kids are doing it. Maybe while you're out walking the dog for the 19th time today, <laughs> just to get out of the house, uh, it's available for you in podcast form as well. I mentioned questions. You can send those to us, coaching at gallop.com. If you want to follow us on Eventbrite, gallop.eventbrite.com. You'll get a notification every time we schedule one of these. So you can be out way ahead of it. I schedule a couple months in advance. So that way you can be way ahead of it, block it out on your calendar. Micah and I are both super excited to be able to close this this year's 
Gallup at Work Summit. The 2020 version will be completely virtual and available and at a pretty affordable price right now. So if you head out to gallupatwork.com, you can now see the agenda has been posted. Everything that's going on has been posted. No reason to wait, except you might want to wait till tomorrow. Abby's coming on. She is our event coordinator for that, and she'll be giving some additional details on Call the Coach. So you can sign up today if you want. If you want to wait till tomorrow, that'd be okay too. You can join us for that call to coach. But we would love to have you join us for that. Micah and I get to uh, get to close that up. That's gonna be pretty cool, right? I'm so excited. We get to do it <laughs> twice. Yeah. So yeah. we get to have like our wrap party. Basically, it's a summit wrap party. So if yeah. you like this, it's even cooler. <laughs> hey, in Europe, we know it's late for you, but just it's one time. It's one Tuesday during the year. You're in quarantine. Just stay with us. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, so don't go to Europe. Party with us in the evening. Just you, you, you shift your stuff to the evening and stay up late. Asia, we're going to do some things uh, early for you. Stay, stay close for all those details. We have a lot of that stuff still coming up. If you want to join us in the Facebook group, it's facebook.com slash groups slash call to coach on LinkedIn search Clifton strengths train coaches. And when you find that group, just ask to be invited in and I will let you in as well. I want to thank you for joining us for this. If you're brand new and it's the first time you've heard this, we have tons more content just like this, just for you available on our site. Again, head to gallup.com slash Clifton strengths. And it's all right there. If you're listening live, stay around for the post show with that. We'll say goodbye, everybody.